this continuity method. So for a moment, we're going to sort of return to fracture mechanics to talk about you know, how to define this sort of displacement discontinuity that occurs at the tip of a crack, or how to use it. So first, we're just going to start with a definition. So if we have our sort of char characteristic representative volume of Earth, it's on a coordinate system um, x, y, z, and it has a little crack in it. So on the on the exterior, we have a nor our normal kind of stresses that, in general, uh, could be both shear and normal stresses on all the faces. So nothing new there, right? And so what we're going to call those our remote stresses. And so our, that remote stress tensor, that's the same components that we've seen all class. We're just using this, the superscript R to designate the remote stress here. And it's a symmetric set stress tensor, so I only, only wrote the upper half. The, the lower half is symmetric. And so then if we zoom in on our crack, then on this same coordinate system, so here's our, here's our crack. And we're just going to draw a little sort of notch in the crack like this to indicate that it's infinite in the z direction. And so on the interior faces of the, of the crack, we also have, a, or, or centered at this coordinate system, we all also have a stress. And that's the stress on the crack. Right. So we'll just use the superscript C here. Now, I, I wrote the full tensor here, but remember, you know, remember that the, the pressure on the interior of the crack is being imposed by a fluid, right? And, the, and so a fluid typically can't impose shear stress on, a, on anything. So the shear stress is, might be zero, but in general, we'll, we'll leave them in there, okay? So then we're going to talk about or we're going to define what, what will show up later in the equations as driving stresses. And this is essentially is the tensor form of the net pressure, right? So the net pressure was the pressure in the fracture minus the, the pressure trying to close the fracture, which is typically the minimum principal stress. But this is a, a general three-dimensional thing at this point. So we're going to talk about the crack driving stresses. We're going to define them as sigma 1. And that 1 in corresponds to that open. Remember, we talked about the three types of fracture modes, opening mode, shear mode, tearing mode, last lecture, or maybe on Monday. So the opening mode, then, is going to be sigma yy remote minus sigma yy on the crack. The shear mode be sigma xy remote minus sigma xy on the crack. And the tearing mode will be sigma xz, sigma xz, like that. So this is just the definition of our driving stresses. And again, this is sort of the tensorial form of 
our net pressure that we've been talking about. So now we're going to follow some definitions from a paper, Pollard and others, 1987. We're going to define what they call a tri-polar coordinate system. So we're going to have a crack that's 2A in length, right? So this point, well, we're, we're, we're going to plop down a coordinate system right at the centroid. Right? So this is Y. This is X. And so this point is A0, and this point over here is minus A0, and the coordinate system sits at the origin. So the crack that's length 2A, we're going to put a coordinate system right in the middle of it. And then we're going to use three vectors to define a point in space. So this is just a point in space. And our first vector is going to be our regular polar coordinate system from a regular polar coordinate system that we're used to. So this has radius R angle theta. And then we're going to draw another vector here. This is going to be R1, and it's going to have an th angle theta1. And then over here, So that all these point at the same point. Right? So this is going to be R2, theta 2. And then just for convenience, we're going to define, because they're going to show up in the equations a lot, we're going to have a big R that's the square root of R1, R2, and gamma, which is theta 1 plus theta 2 over 2. And so we're not going to derive it, of course, but the displacement field in terms of these parameters can be written like this. And this is going to take me a while to write down. It's kind of long. In terms of the driving stresses, and the, this coordinate system. I'll post these notes, of course. 
One more. The last one's not that long. Okay. So that's the displacement field as a function of those parameters. So on the cracked surface, And the way we're going to get to the cracked surface is we're going to take those parameters and take we're going to move that point onto the tip of the crack at A. Okay? So we're going to collapse all those vectors onto the surface. And there's sort of two ways you can approach it, right? So you have you have the three points. could approach it from this way or you could also approach it from this way. Okay. So we're just looking at sort of the limiting case on the cracked surface and that's where, you know, in the R is the absolute value of X on the cracked surface. R1 is A minus X, R2 is A plus X, theta is 0 and pi, theta 1 is minus pi and pi, theta 2 is 0 and 2 pi, big R is A squared minus x squared square root and gamma is either pi or 3 pi over 2. And the reason, so the commas indicate the, the two approaches, from the top or from the bottom. Okay? And so if you plug in, if you plug in these things into those equations from the previous slide, then what you'll get is this. So that's in the surface of the crack. And the plus or minus comes from the fact that, you know, if, if, we, if we plugged it in, if we plugged in the, the first set of values, we get the plus. If we plug in the second set of values, we get the minus. So we just write it compactly like plus or minus. So the plus or minus refers to y at 0 plus, y at zero minus. So what I mean there is, you know, y is the vertical direction. This is y. So are we approaching the cracked surface from the top or from the bottom? Ultimately, the cracked surface is a y equals zero. Just depends on how we get there. <laughs> 
So then we're going to introduce a notation like this, where this notation imp implies a discontinuity, where the discontinuity is referred to as the ith value taken from the top and taken from the bottom. So here i is either x, y, or z, and m is 1, 2, or 3. And so if you do that, so if you evaluate the ui's, you know, you take the plus terms and subtract the minus terms. Then what you get is the displacement discontinuity associated with the open mode shear mode tearing mode is equal to That guy. And so these are, this is the displacement discontinuities. And remember, in, in terms of when you approach a crack, there's like a 1 over r, there's 1 over the distance from the crack singularity. And that shows up here. So if x is equal to a, that's right at the crack tip. And that's under a square root sign, so then you, this thing blows up. But so, so these can't technically be evaluated right at the crack tip, but as, as you approach the crack tip, in the limiting case, then these get, become more accurate. And these, are, these displacement discontinuities are something that are observable in the field, uh, particularly in a special case. Like that is, if I had a, if I had a, imagine I had a fracture, or let's just, not the field necessarily, but let's say I, I uh, did some laboratory tests where I had a fracture, and on either side of this fracture, I laid down a straight edge across the fracture, and I drew a line. Right. And then, so if I were then to apply a shear load such that I get the fracture to extend, now my line would be like that, right? So the crack grew in some place along due to the shear loading. And that line that I had originally you know, scribed on the sample, now it, now it would look like that, right? Well, the distance between these guys, this distance, that would be your, your mode two displacement discontinuity. And this is what occurs in shear failure or you know, microseismic activity that you can observe in the field associated with hydraulic fracture. So, um, of course, the, the displacement discontinuity in the mode one, that's the opening direction. Well, that corresponds to the width of the fracture, right? So then you could uh, plug that into a mass, mass balance equation. along the fracture. So this could be solved, you know, if you know the width, because you know the displacement discontinuity, um, then you can solve for the pressure field in the, fr in the fracture. Um, then according to Jim Rice's 1969 solution, you can relate that 
the displacement discontinuity to the fracture tuples. So in mode one, and in mode two, And so you can basically couple all this in your computer code. Remember, you have that we have this criterion that this, when the stress intensity factor exceeds the fracture toughness, K1 exceeds K1C, or K2 exceeds K2C, then you're going to have some fracture extension. And if you have fracture extension, you know, so we'll talk a little bit, we'll talk more next time, but basically in a computer code, if you have fracture extension, you'd have to do something, either physically insert new information, you know, like a new element there or something, and recompute the simulation. But basically, you know, you'd compute the coupled fluid flow problem with the displacement discontinuity solution, use the displacement discontinuity solution to, evalu to evaluate the stress intensity factor. So if the stress intensity factor exceeds a critical value, you extend the crack and go on. And so that's, we'll stop here and we'll talk about that next time.